We spoke and I really liked her. I liked her. Big dog, I liked you. I did as liked you. My mentor or former mentor said I'm dumb and I'd rather be getting dick than being in this opportunity. Baby. Cause they be renting out these houses and like pretending that it's there and that she scams and all her gear is fake. And she said that her car was Forex funded. Her car is not Forex funded. <laughs> Made no type of bread. I was P150. Where is my $150? The bitch gonna tell me. Why do you have a boyfriend? You're not a millionaire yet. I thought that these girls were genuine when they was talking shit about me the whole time. I trusted them to help me get to financial freedom. I trusted them with my $235. I trusted them with the things that I told them and they were talking about me the whole time. Welcome back to my channel. It's your girl Kayla here and I'm back with another video for y'all. If you're new, you already know what to do. Hit that subscribe button. Turn that subscribe button from red to gray. Like, I really need y'all to turn that button down below from red to gray. Although red's a fire color, but like, girl, we need to turn it gray because cause I want you to because I said so. But anyways, um... Subscribe if you're new and also follow on my social medias which will be on the screen and down below. If you do see makeup here, I just finished filming a little chit chat get ready with me and I haven't like cleaned up yet. I just wanted to film this video right away. But today we're going to be exposing Bumba Clot for X. I should have known it was bad because it's for X. It has the word X in it. X is never good. X's are never good. I guess I should have really thought that through before I joined. But no, we're going to be exposing Forex. Not specifically the group that I was in, though. Specifically the group that I was in. I'm going to try my best not to make this story time too long and not to ramble. Because I could already see it. I could already see myself making the video too long. So yeah, I don't got lashes because it's like, what? Huh? What time is it? 3 o'clock in the morning right now. And... I cannot find my lash glue. Yeah, so we not dealing with lashes today. It's just, it, it is what it is. But yeah, um, without further ado, let's get started with this story time. So I've always heard about Forex. I was never interested. I didn't want to hear anything about it. I don't care. I don't care how you're making money. I don't care. Like, I really didn't care. Like, people at my college would do it, and I would just be like, okay, cool. Go you. I'ma just do what I does on the YouTube.com. Um, which this is why I would never give up on YouTube because it's been getting me through a lot financially. So, all right. So I heard about Forex a lot. Didn't really care about it. But then this one girl who I met outside of like Forex, I guess. I think. She went to my old, she went to the middle school in my high school. Because my high school, like, was, like, middle school, elementary school, and high school. So, she hit me up one day, and, like, she was very convincing. So, I'm like, okay. No, she was convincing, but at the same time, she was a little bit pushy with it. Like, a little bit annoying with it. But I feel like a lot of Forex traders and stuff, they have to, they have to do that. They have to do that. So, um... She's been a little too pushy, and I kind of felt forced to join. So I joined her team, and that didn't work out because everybody that said that they were going to be with me throughout this whole time left me in the dust. Left me to figure out everything on my own. Like, my mentor or whoever was in charge of, like, bringing me into the business said that I literally told him that I need him to call me every day to hold me accountable. I ended up calling this man every day to talk about things. If you're my mentor, I expect for you to be calling me, not for me to be calling you. Because what am I calling you for? Like, what? Um, hello. Like, no. You're going to be calling me. 
asking me how my day was, asking me if I have any questions. Like, I'm not gonna call you because it's like, you you try to convince me to get into this opportunity. So I expect you to convince me to stay in the opportunity, not just to, you know. And I was an IBO, so I had to, I paid like, what, $16? So I wasn't really like the 235 trading person. I don't even know, I was so confused as to what the hell I was supposed to do. I guess I was supposed to get as much people as possible and stuff like that, and I don't know, like, it was weird. I felt like they was using me for my clout. They was using me for my clout. I don't care, I'ma be so, I'ma be transparent. This first forest group was using me for my clout. They were using me for my followers. They were using me for my social media. They were using me, right? And I feel like this whole opportunity is to use people, to use people to benefit yourself. Anyways, let me continue. The first group didn't work out, so I ended up leaving. Then I saw this all, and it was like a whole bunch of older people too. So I was like, yeah, no, it's not for me. Then I end up joining another team, RIP to the trading ladies. They're no longer alive because, you know, I guess everybody left or whatever. Um, I, w I, I was like, yes, this is the team that I want to be on for sure. This is a team that I want to be on. Mind you, the other on the other um team, I was like tuned into the Zoom calls a little bit, not really into it like that cuz I didn't really I couldn't do much because I didn't pay my 235. So, this was the team that I'm like, yes, this is the team I want to be on for a fact. So, I reached out to one of the girls on the team and um the process of getting me started wasn't hard at all because it, all they want is their 235. So I gave them their 235. And from then, like from signing up or whatever to the new team, I um I started learning right away. So one thing about this team, they didn't leave me in the dust. They literally tried to teach me everything that I needed to know right away. So I started learning right away and everything felt like so like Obviously, I had questions or whatever, so I was asking questions. Everything felt great. Everything felt great in this group. I'm like, damn, okay, it's all girls. Some of them are younger than me. Some of them are older than me, but not too old, like maybe a couple years older than me. So I'm like, okay, maybe I'm a, I'm a fit in more with this group, so I'm probably gonna actually wanna go far with this opportunity the girls in the group are very nice to me you know they were welcoming me and stuff and let's just fast forward to meeting them in person should i have names i'm gonna name them as like dogs like dogs so big dog that's the one she put me in the opportunity like she basically stayed on the phone with me we spoke and i really liked her i liked her big dog i liked you i did ass liked you just wait, because there's a whole bunch of bullshit. I like Big Dog, so that's another reason why I joined, because she was convincing, but like at the same time, she was very sweet and seemed so genuine. You seemed so genuine, girl. You seemed you was, you was seemed so genuine. Where you learn to act? Teach me how to act. Come on, you should be on television. So, Big Dog was like, yeah, I'm taking out out. So it was me, Big Dog, and some other girls, right? I'm gonna just call them, um, Chihuahuas. We was the little Chihuahuas. I was a Chihuahua too. Big Dog was just Big Dog. Um, cause she was the head of the group or whatever. And she was big, so Big Dog. Mind you, when I seen Big Dog page, I'm like, damn, designer down, drip down, drip too hard, can't stand too close. Drip down, Gucci this, Gucci that. Gucci everything. Louis this, Louis that, Louis everything. Um, Dior, Chanel. Her whole page was just designer down, and I'm like, whoa, Forex is getting you where you wanna be. Forex is getting you designer. Forex is getting you designer in paying your bills and stuff like that. So like that kind of like drew my attention as well. Like her page, seeing like all her designer clothes. I'm like, yeah, this soon be me. She was what? P5000. She was P5000. Yeah. We the Chihuahuas or whatever. Keep that in mind. 
So me and Big Dog and Chihuahua and what? The Chihuahuas and the Big Dog, including me, as a Chihuahua, went out to this fire ass Spanish restaurant. Like their food was so good. I'm not even gonna hold you. Big Dog, you did good with that restaurant. I'm sorry. I'm a, I'm gonna give you your props and your credit when it's you know necessary. So we went to the Spanish restaurant and we was talking about trading and stuff. Like I was on calls, my first calls. And it was great, like it was so, it was a great vibe. It was just really great vibe. The first restaurant we went to, we didn't like the menu or whatever. So that's how come we ended up traveling to another restaurant somewhere else. So we had a great time. The food was bomb, like I said before. I started getting on calls that day and I think I had my first sign up that day. I was just on a roll trying to convince people like this is the opportunity you need if you have no job if you you know can't support yourself you need to be in this opportunity i'm calling out everybody who says they're interested and i was on the road and i ended up hitting my first rank p150 two days after i joined the saturday i think we went out no i think i joined like a friday or a thursday I don't remember but like three or four days after I joined I hit my first rank p150 oh if y'all don't know what Forex is it's trading currencies in the foreign exchange market I'm so sorry I should have mentioned that before I'm gonna like put it in the beginning but yeah I hit my first rank just like that like I thought I was on a roll one thing about Forex was that it it bought the word manifestation. Why I sound like I don't know it? Manifestation. It bought the word manifestation to my life. And it's something that I was never really big on. I never even knew the meaning of it like that. But Forex actually bought manifestation to my life. It had me write in note card. I still got the note cards. Work in silence and let your success make the noise. Stop watching other people's life, start living yours. And like a whole bunch of other stuff. Like it made me want to manifest a lot of things because I did what I did in the matter of two or three days. So like it just made me like, damn girl, you are mad powerful. You got this. You can hit chairwoman in no time, chairwoman loading. I mean, I was so heavy on the chairwoman loading. I put a sticky note here as well, but I took it off when I quit. Yeah, I was so heavy on the chairwoman loading. I was calling everybody chairwoman. Half of them is not even in the opportunity no more, so. But yeah, I was calling a lot of them chairwomen. We was just calling each other chairwomen as a form of motivation. Like, we really got this. We really can do this. I'm still in the opportunity. I'm learning about pips, stop loss, take profit. All of that stuff. Calls every second of the day. Nobody left me alone. Like, leave me alone. Calling me, oh, get on this call. Are you on this call? Da -da -da. Call, 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 call. Get on this call. Are you on a Zoom call? Are you, are you, um, plugged in? Plug in, plug in, plug in, plug in, plug in. Like, can I plug out for a second? Like, I'm always plugged in. Like, can I plug out for a second? So that made me a little bit like, damn, I really kind of don't want to do this no more. Because my YouTube went down. My revenue went down. I don't think I lost subscribers, but my money went down. I don't play with my money. But at the time, I was playing with my money because I stayed in this opportunity. Y'all, and this is not no average story talking about my experience and it gets spicy. It gets spicy. Um, one thing I didn't mention was that the old group had drama. And I thought that this group was not going to have drama. And when I was in the opportunity, it didn't have drama. Until I left. But anyways, let me continue. I'm learning about a lot of stuff. They keep telling me to plug in. It's getting me tight. It's getting me annoyed. Honestly, I, I had to like put on a fake ass smile like, <laughs> okay. I want to do this. Even though I've hinted to them, like, I low-key want to leave, they will beg me to stay. And it's like, why are you begging me to stay? But I still stay like a dummy. Oh, so not too long after I joined, the girl 
who convinced me to join the other group left that group and joined the group that I'm in, right? She joined our group or whatever, and we spoke less because um, I feel like the only reason we were like speaking a lot is because we were in the same group the first time. We spoke less because she came after me, so I kind of like got a head start. Um, damn, my camera is dying. So I'm in the opportunity, it's annoying, but I'm still like trying because I did pay $235 to be in this opportunity. So, I'm not like I'm 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 doing it but I'm not really like motivated at this point. Like when it started to get annoying, I just stopped like manifesting stuff. Like chairwoman was just like okay. And every time I would, you know, feel discouraged, um, and I would let them know they would try to get me to stay and you know keep going and stuff, trying to work stuff out with me. When in reality I really didn't want to stay, like I really just should have left and blocked everybody respectfully. If I knew that this was the type of people I was dealing with, I would have done that a long time ago. But I was being too nice, too lenient. This one time, right, this is like a month into the opportunity or a couple weeks, a few weeks. My boyfriend came with me to get my tattoos. I got two tattoos that day and we went back to his house. So. Uh, we, me and Ja was supposed to go to Atlanta, well, his family, and I was supposed to go along with them, uh, but my mom didn't let me go because of the pandemic, and the COVID cases were rising in Atlanta, so I ended up not going, but at this point, I thought I was going, so I told my mentor, Big Dog, that I was going to Atlanta with my boyfriend. The bitch gonna tell me. Why do you have a boyfriend? You're not a millionaire yet. What are you doing with a boyfriend? The bitch really asked me why I have a boyfriend. And tried to justify it by saying that I'm not a millionaire yet, so I shouldn't have a boyfriend. And she blacked. Not blacked. But she blacked, like, not blacked in a bad way, but she was basically, like, lecturing me. And it was on speaker, so he, my boyfriend was hearing everything. He's like, oh, what is he doing for you? This, that, and the third. I'm like, bitch, like, we just started dating. Th Literally, this is a day after me and Josh started dating. And she's talking about, oh, you don't need a boyfriend. Um, you're not a millionaire. You don't need a boyfriend. And she's on the phone saying all of this shit. And I'm like, whoa. Like, that's on call. You're not my mother. You're not my mother. Who are you, big dog? Who are you to tell me that I can't have a boyfriend? Who? And I just found out she's two years older than me. Two years older than me. And I listened to her. Did I break up with my man? Hell to the bum, but cleat. No. I didn't break up with him, but I like took her words into consideration. Like I, 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 I took her words into consideration, which I shouldn't have because, girl, you're two years older than me. You probably have mad niggas. You probably have mad niggas in your inbox. You probably have two boyfriends, five boyfriends. Like that pissed me off. It turned me off. Every time I told somebody that story, they like, why? Why? what anyways that turned me off and then big dog was close to little dog yeah i'm just called little dog little dog and big dog was close little dog was helping me throughout the whole like process of learning everything about pips all of that that was the first thing she told me about pips so little dog called me saying oh so you have a boyfriend i'm like but like I just told Big Dog this. How did you find out that? How did you find out that I have a boyfriend? Obviously, Big Dog opened her big ass mouth and told Little Dog that I have a boyfriend. And from then on, I knew that I was dealing with a whole bunch of fake bitches. Cause if I tell you something, or if you find something out about me, why are you opening your mouth to tell Little Dog? Why are you opening your mouth to tell somebody else? If you find something out about me, especially if it's something that we have, we had a deep conversation about. Why? Why? I didn't tell little dog that I have a boyfriend. 
I didn't tell anybody that I had a boyfriend. Because I didn't really, like, oh, I have a boyfriend. Like, no. Like, if you find out, cool. I'm not going to come up front to you and be like, I have a boyfriend. You feel me? And on top of that, you made me feel uncomfortable with the whole situation. And then you told somebody else, uncomfortable times two. If uncomfortable was a person, it would just, it would be me. Because you made me uncomfortable. Telling my business to somebody else in the business. From that point, I knew that I was dealing with a whole bunch of fakies. Like, fakies, 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 fakies. So I ended up leaving the opportunity. <laughs> made no type of bread. I was P150, where is my $150? Oh, okay. Where, in the market? In the stock market? Where's my $150? I hit P150 in four days. Where is my $150? Where is it at? I want to know. So anyways, I left the opportunity and her ass was trying to, Big Dog was trying to get me back. And I respectfully left her on unopened. Like, I know what you're trying to do. You're trying to get me back into something that I don't want to do. I really didn't want to do. She's like, oh, since you're settled down with school now, this is when my semester started for sophomore year. Since you're settled down with school now, maybe you want to come back to the business or... I didn't even open her message. I didn't even click on it because I knew what she was going to say. And if the story goes on, if, she, if I knew she was a good, genuine person, I would have considered joining back. But let me just finish the story. So, I left the opportunity and uh, I was just doing my own thing. Get, trying to get back on track with YouTube. And it was super hard to be as consistent as I was before I started Forex. It was so hard. Like, I'm still, like, adjusting to my consistency that I stopped at in the summertime. So, um, the girl that brought me into the opportunity, we ended up having a conversation. No, she ended up posting about it. I'm like, whoa, 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 girl, I thought you was still here. I thought you was still trading. I thought you was a trading lady still. I thought you was still a trading lady. I thought you was still a trading lady. But anyways, she put me on and she told me the whole team is done, deceased, gone. There's no more trading ladies. And that big dog... It's a fake ass big dog. And that she scams and all her gear is fake. And she said that her car was Forex funded. Her car is not Forex funded. She got a car like not too long um, of me being in the opportunity. She got a car. She said that she was Forex funded. And it came out that it was not Forex funded. Stop saying things are Forex funded if it's not Forex funded. Like come on and then i text gabby today and i was telling her that i was doing the story time or whatever she was like oh girl if i knew you was gonna join i would have told you not to because they be renting out these houses and like pretending that it's theirs for freaking clout or just to get people to join it's like damn bitch like if that's not your crib like why are you trying to fake it? Why? Like, I feel like a lot of Forex people who go so hard about it, their life is fake. Fake everything. Their stuff is not Forex funded. Her car is not Forex funded. Her gear apparently is fake, says somebody. And she said I'm dumb. My mentor or former mentor said I'm dumb and I'd rather be getting dick than being in this opportunity baby so that's when i was kind of like what like what like i'd rather be getting dick than to be in the opportunity when i was convincing my boyfriend to join the opportunity i'd rather be getting dick when i was trying to get him to be a trading gentleman or trading trading gentleman i think that was the the guy's version I was trying to get my man to join to pay his 235 and I would rather be getting dick than to be an opportunity, right? Right, big dog? You look dumb, you sound dumb. I found out all her stuff is fake and that just fake, fake. Everything that comes out of a Forex person's mouth, I don't believe it. It's fake to me. And for all my friends that do Forex, I'm sorry. It's just not something that I, I support. Like. 
I want everybody to be successful to get where they want to get to but don't fake it yeah so everything that comes out of the forex people's mouths I don't believe I don't really care people try to text me all the time for me to join and I just I, I left I leave them on open or I say I'm not interested because respectfully I'm not interested stop texting me about forex I don't want to do it I don't I'm not convincing anybody to do it I'm not encouraging anybody not to do it it takes one person it takes one right good person to really um persuade you into joining this opportunity i thought that these girls were genuine when they was talking shit about me the whole time i trusted them to i trusted them to help me get to financial freedom. I trusted them with my $235. I trusted them with the things that I told them and they was talking about me the whole time. And she said, you know what Big Dog said? She could get me back anytime, I'm dumb. I'm dumb and she could get me back anytime. But well, where am I? Am I back? Oh, oh, okay. That was my experience with Forex. If you want to join, you can join if you want to. If you want to. If you want to waste $235, by all means, go ahead. Oh. Well, I bet you buy a, a pair of Jordans for $235, but you won't pay $235 to be in this opportunity. Yeah, I'd rather buy my Jordans than to, than to be getting my phone blown up. For people to act like they care about me, act like they want me to be financially free, act like they want me to be a millionaire, act like they care about my success, my financial issues, my living issues. Don't. Don't. I don't want to hear it. Anyways, if you guys enjoyed the video, like, comment, and most importantly, subscribe. If you felt some type of way, I don't know what to tell you. Maybe your group is just better than the effed up groups that I've been in. But anyways, y'all, I'm going to see y'all in my next video. Bye.